Hey, a friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to share with you 10 reasons why you should be using the Marquee Tool in Logic. Now, the Marquee Tool is one of the many, many different mouse click tools available to you in those drop-down menus at the top of the tracks area or the piano roll and various other sections of Logic Pro. But the Marquee Tool specifically appears in the tracks area and the audio track editor. And I've talked to so many Logic Pro users who are not familiar with the Marquee Tool, or they'll ask me, hey, Chris, do you use the Marquee Tool? Absolutely. It is essential to my workflow. So I really want to help you get down with the Marquee Tool with these 10 reasons why it's awesome. Let's dig into it. First, let's acquaint ourselves with the mouse click tools, which are these drop-down menus at the top in the top middle of the tracks area. The menu on the left-hand side is the left click tool or your primary click tool. I think for most of us, the left click tool tends to be the pointer tool because honestly, I think it just makes the most sense for most situations. The pointer tool allows you to click on regions, move them around, copy and paste. But of course, you can change the left click tool at any time to any other mouse click tool that makes sense for your workflow. However, I tend to leave my left click tool as the pointer and then specify different command click tools, which is what the right menu is all about. As you can see, my command click tool is already set to the marquee tool but this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. For example, if I wanted to choose the gain tool as my command click tool, so if I hold command and hover my mouse over a region, as you can see, I can now make gain adjustments to this region as long as I'm holding command. So I can drive this up a bit or drive it back down. Plus there are further opportunities to customize the mouse based on context or situation. If we go up to the top menu bar, Go over to Logic Pro, down to Settings, under General. Under the Editing tab are options for pointer tools and tracks provides, and these are called click zones. I'm not going to belabor this point because I have several other videos all about click zones, but suffice it to say that click zones are essentially the smart tool in other DAWs, if you're familiar with that concept. And if you go to the right mouse button menu, you can also use the right mouse button as an assignable tool. So you can see that these menus have now expanded. And if I just hover my mouse over each, the help tag will pop up. We see the left click tool. We see the command click tool. And now we have the right click tool. So if I hover my mouse in the tracks area and right click, I've now used the scissor tool to split up this region. Now I have three mouse tools. But personally, I find I get a little confused when I have all of these menus and all of these tools available. So I prefer to leave my right mouse button as an option to open the shortcut menu. And instead, I use click zones. So when I hover my mouse in the bottom half of a region, I get the marquee tool. I'm not even holding command or anything else. I'm just hovering my mouse. If I hover my mouse in the top portion, it's the pointer tool. And there's much more beyond that. So in our top 10 list of reasons why you should use the marquee tool, number one is that you can start playback from any selection using the marquee tool. So I'm hovering my mouse in the bottom half of this track lane if I click, I create a selection right here on the alpha pad track lane. The track lane doesn't really matter so much. It's the fact that I've made a selection. Now, if I press play, watch what happens. I started playback from this selection, not from bar one where the playhead was originally positioned. Check it out too. If I turn on the cycle range here, obviously the playhead starts out following the cycle range, but let me make a selection down here and hit play. The selection begins playback, not from the cycle range, but instead again from my selection using the marquee tool. This behavior can be adjusted if you go up to the play button and right click, and I could adjust the playback behavior if I disable this option to play from marquee selection. Logic Pro will ignore any marquee selection I've made. And if I re-enable this, Logic Pro prioritizes marquee selections above cycle selections. Number two in our list, if you make a selection that's longer than just a click, so if I click, hold, and drag over any section, Logic Pro will play from the beginning of this selection to the end and then stop. Right, so we listen to this section starting halfway between bars five and six to bar eight. 
a nice tidy selection. But I suspect for most of us, we'd rather not hear one selection from beginning to end and that's it, just one time, but instead on repeat using the cycle range. So many users might just go to the timeline here and drag across to make a selection using the cycle range to set the cycle to your preferred area. However, if you make a marquee selection and then hold command and press U, you could set the cycle based on your marquee selection. Now, number four in our list is the ability to copy and paste sections of regions without splitting up the regions. Now, I'm kind of cutting ahead, so let's actually say this is number four. With a marquee tool, you can split up regions very easily just by double clicking on the region with the marquee tool. So I've just split up this region of this rusty piano. If I undo, I can also make a selection of a portion of this region and then click, hold and drag to split up these two notes from the rest of the region. But check it out, if you make a marquee selection, then hold option and then click, hold and drag, you can copy and paste that selection without splitting up the region. This works for MIDI, it works for audio. I'll make my selection. And then when you click, hold and drag, just make sure to hold option. And there you go, I've copied and pasted just this one note. I believe we're up to number six in our list right now. I'm kind of jumping around from the list that I wrote out for myself. But number six, you can make selections and delete. So if I make a selection, press delete, I've split up the region. If I undo, make a selection, press delete. I've now removed this note from the region. Number seven is a feature that many folks refer to the scissors tool to accomplish. But honestly, you can do it with the marquee tool as well. So let me just dice up this region pretty cleanly right on the bar 14 and bar 23. So we have a nice tidy region right here of this guitar. Now from here, maybe I wanna split up the region into equal parts, maybe into quarter notes or 16ths, but you wanna split up the region very quickly without having to make individual edits. So if I split this region up by double clicking, yeah, that's fine, but wouldn't it be easier just to do it in one go? Well, you actually can. First, let's bring up the tool menu and I'll get the scissor tool and I could click with the scissor tool to split up the region, or I could hold option to make multiple edits in one go. So I held option, clicked with the scissor tool, and there you go. I split up this region based on bars. If I use the marquee tool, and again, I don't even have to have the marquee tool. So let me set this back to the pointer. Let me set this back to maybe my gain tool. If I just hover my mouse in the bottom section, right about where I wanna split up the region in equal parts. And because I'm using click zones, all I have to do is hold shift and option. My mouse cursor turns into the pointer with the marquee tool. And if I double click, I split up the region once again in equal parts. No scissor tool required. So if I undo and let me hover maybe a little closer, let me just deselect here. Look at that, right? So now I can maybe select equal parts here, holding shift and get a little more of a gated effect. Number eight in our list is the ability to copy and paste selections. So check it out. I've selected these two notes of my rusty piano and let's just hear it to have something to listen to. Right? Now, if I hold command and press C, I've now copied this selection. Let me just make sure to deselect my selection. And then if I place the playhead here and select this track, I'll hold command and press V. And I've now copied and pasted the selection using key commands. The thing to watch out for, if you have a selection, so let's make a selection, command and C to copy. You do have to be careful because if that marquee selection is still in place, it doesn't really matter where the playhead is. If I hold command and press V, watch what happens. I ended up copying and pasting the selection in the exact same place. So again, make your selection. Command and C, deselect, then paste at the playhead position. 
but one step cooler is number nine. If you make a selection and then press Command and R, you copy and paste that selection, including any empty section of the tracks area that you included in that selection. Logic repeats or copies and pastes and accommodates that empty section. Number 10 in our list of reasons why you should be using the Marquee Tool in Logic Pro. If you make a selection and then press record, Logic Pro will automatically create punch in and out points based on your selection. So check it out. I made this selection right here. Let me set up my count in, software monitoring, and low latency mode, and let me press record. And there you go. There's my new take of my guitar performance based on this punch in and out points that I set up with the marquee selection. Just make sure to turn off the punch in and out when you're done so you can record in other areas of Logic Pro. But of course, you could always make a selection with the marquee tool and then set up a new punch in and out point. The marquee tool is awesome. It is definitely not something to be overlooked in Logic Pro. I would get used to using the marquee tool as soon as possible. It really just makes life so much easier, especially when you pair it with click zones. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Per Rules, either on the website or here on the channel. Also, be sure to check out the description below, which will include links to free templates, guides, PDFs to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week. Take care.